Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is your boy Fitzmong TV here, aka G Lauren33. I'm back here today with another video on the channel for you guys. And today, uh, we're gonna be talking a little bit about the Dragon Ball Super manga. Got some interesting information out of V Jump, and I just wanted to make a quick little video discussing it. And as always, make sure to give your comments and your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe if you guys are new. This is your home for all of the major Dragon Ball news, no matter if it's the anime, manga, video games, all of that good stuff. This is your home. So make sure you guys have notifications uh, enabled by clicking the bell next to my name, Fitzmung TV, so you guys never miss out on a video. But uh, if you guys missed the video I put out uh, yesterday, depending on when you guys are watching this, right? Um, we got the announcement via V Jump Links and DBS Hype on Twitter. We got the announcement of the next Dragon Ball Super manga arc and uh, it's gonna be starting in December and it will be a prequel to the Dragon Ball Super superhero movie which released uh, earlier this year and uh, in this new manga story we're gonna be seeing uh, Goten and Trunks now in their teen uh, years they're gonna be coming superheroes and I cover that in depth uh, in yesterday's video um, I got a little bit of extra uh, information on it and uh basically uh, i want to say say thank you to dbs chronicles for getting us this translation from v jump it says and i quote uh finally starting with the next issue which will be december next month dragon ball super will return to talk about the manga uh it appears that it will cover the story of the movie dragon ball super superhero starting with a prequel before the main story we hope you're excited to wait and see what kind of adventure it will be orange piccolo and sun gohan beast the new transformations were so cool so it appears that we are going to be getting an actual adaptation uh, adaptation of the superhero movie in the manga, which would be a first. If you guys remember, with Resurrection F, um, we got uh we got a little bit of a prequel to that in the manga, but this was way back before Toratar was fully doing the Dragon Ball Super manga, right? And uh, the Broly movie was not covered in the manga. It was mentioned, and we got a couple pages on it, um, but it was never covered. This would be the first Dragon Ball Super movie, um to you know actually get a full adaptation in the manga which is pretty cool uh it is a little bit weird that we're getting a prequel to a movie that's already been released usually when you release a prequel it's meant to build hype up for the film before it's released but I, i'm not gonna you know i'm not really complaining you know i think it's gonna be really cool to see you know uh, whatever they plan to do with goten and trunks here becoming superheroes it's gonna be cool to see goten and trunks actually get a little bit of spotlight in the manga uh, you know you know anime and the manga goten and trunks have had little to no role in, in dragon ball super so it will be cool to see goten and trunks you know get a little bit of a feature here and it also will be cool to see how they adapt uh the superhero movie what things will be different you know because we do know that you know the manga uh its continuity is different than the anime for the most part the events are the same but you know things you know uh some of the events are a little bit different like for example like i talked about this already the way goku uh Gage ultra instinct for the first time in determined power it's different in the manga than it is in the anime Right, for the most part, it is the same, but the way the event takes place is a little bit different, you know, and that's a video for another day. So it will be interesting to see what differences will take place between what the manga does with the superhero adaptation and what we saw in the movie. For the most part, I expect most things to be pretty much the same, but there there might be, you know, a little changes here there because the manga continuity and the anime continuity are two separate continuities, even though it's tug for the most part the same story. Um yeah, you know, one thing like I said, one interesting thing I've seen already on Twitter is, you know, since uh since it's been confirmed that the superhero movie takes place after the Moron Granola arcs in the manga, um, a lot of people believe since you know we know that Black Frieza appears at the end of of the uh moral story and he has his new black frieza form you know basically a lot of people believe that it's confirmed that the reason broly's mainly on beerus's planet turning with go 
Goku and Vegeta in the superhero movie um, is because uh, people believe Goku, Vegeta, and Broly are training to defeat Frieza, right? Which I do think is a valid reason. We'll see if that's actually the case uh, with whatever the manga chooses to do. But, you know, that I, I find that very, very interesting. You know, I do think uh, we will see uh, Broly um, in the manga. Finally, fake his, his his first official, official appearance in the Dragon Ball Super manga. Um, I think that's going to be really cool. And I, I can't wait to see, uh, you know, what they do with it. Um, very, very exciting. But uh, I just wanted to talk about, you know, that quick bit of news really quick. Um, and like I said, we'll be covering the manga uh, in depth um, once it makes its return. Um, anyway, uh, the main the point of this video, I wanted to talk about something else that was featured in uh, V-Jump. So the last couple months, right, since we haven't had any manga chapters, they've been doing like an interval special, right? You know, last month we got a cool new illustration of True Ultra and Sengoku. This month we get a cool new illustration of uh, Super Saiyan 3 Goku uh, by Toritaro, and I, I love the art here, right? The interval special really does covers what the story has been to this point right going through everything that's happened in Dragon Ball Super and you know um just give you kind of like a recap you know little things right and uh for the most part you know I'm gonna make a, a separate video on gas because we finally get an explanation for all of gas's forms um which is really cool um we get some other cool tad bits as well like I said most of this is not translated but uh that uh the point of this video wasn't to go over all of this stuff. But, you know, for the most part, it just really gives a history of Dragon Ball Super, a lot of the characters and what they've done, right? We got information on Moro, right? Goku Black, Zamasu, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, so look at this this cool thing of Gotix right here. I don't know, is that is that teen Gotix or kid Gotix? I think that's kid Gotix, but you know, because I see uh, kid go to the kid trucks right here. But, you know, way the the way the photo is taken here kind of looks like it could be teen go takes, which would be a first. But, you know, we'll assume that this is kid go takes. But anyway, um, the big thing I wanted to talk about is this page right here. Right. And um, basically, uh, here's the full page. So. Uh, Goku gets, a, of course, a, almost a full page to himself. Down here, it talks a little bit about Vegeta and Ultra Ego. Right? You see a little bit of you know Bardock and Gohan and some other stuff. But for the most part, this first half, three quarters of the page, is talking about Goku, right? And a lot of his journey, you know, throughout Dragon Ball Super. You know, uh, it lists all of Goku's forms that he uses primarily. So, of course, base form, Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan 2, Super Saiyan 3, Super Saiyan God, uh, Super Saiyan Blue, right? Um, and it goes over here to Ultra Instinct. Um, and like I said, there's nothing, there's no real, you know, nothing crazy here with uh, explaining Goku's other forms. But when it gets to Ultra Instinct, we actually get some pretty interesting information. Um, and what it says here, uh, and shout out to DBS Chronicles for translating this for us, um, but uh, it says, Ultra Instinct. Goku fights using various Super Saiyan forms and has also learned Ultra Instinct. This is the ultimate form in which Goku can dodge any attack without thinking, but it puts a tremendous strain on his body, which we've known from the beginning. No matter if you've seen Ultra Instinct in the anime or in the manga, you know that Goku can't stay in the form long because it puts a strain on his body. He's been training, of course, throughout the manga to improve that, which he has, but he hasn't gotten to the point where there is no strain. That was one of the goals that we, you know, uh, gave Goku to work on. And really, the only way for Goku to 100% get rid of that strain is for him to get to the point where he can use Ultra Instinct without transforming at all. Where, all he, where Ultra Instinct is as normal to him as breathing. Like for like Whis, for example, the angels, they're always in the Ultra Instinct state. Goku, for the most part, uh, he has to transform uh, to use uh, Ultra Instinct, right? 
And he has been working and slowly improving on that. We know that uh, in Goku's other forms, he can use Ultra Instinct in his Super Saiyan forms. He can use the properties of UI. And, you know, the higher power he is, the higher the transformation he uses, no matter if it's Super Saiyan or God or Blue, the more accurate Ultra Instinct becomes. But Ultra Instinct is at its most accurate when Goku is using it in the actual Ultra Instinct form. No matter if it's UI sign or... Or if it's Master UI or the Silver Hair State, whatever you want to call it, right? But yeah, but like I said, Goku will fully no longer have to deal with the strain of Ultra Instinct once he learns how to use Ultra Instinct in his normal form without transformation, transforming. Um, but you know, things get a little bit interesting once you get down here, right? Ultra Instinct sign, you know, UI sign, you know, some people call it UI Omen, um. UI sign is the gateway to Ultra Instinct, Goku Silver Hair form, right? Uh, so UI sign it has the uh, the black hair, but the silver eyes with the silver aura, um, and the highlights. Um, so it explains the first Ultra Instinct state that Goku awakened during the Tournament of Power, same as the anime and the manga, right? No, no real difference. But at first. It was called Sign during its early days, but in order to bring it closer to perfection, he continued his training, and in the fight against Gas, Goku was able to find a way to use this black hair state, uh, which could be activated even while carrying his emotions. So th that's, uh, that's very interesting, right? So for the most part, uh, this is not really new information to everybody, right? Um... It says here, um, it was called Sign, right? But uh, he continued training, and Goku was able to find a way to use this black hair state, which could be activated even while carrying his emotions. So this confirms, this confirms that true Ultra Instinct Goku, the Ultra Instinct form that Goku used against Gas at the end of the Granola arc, it wasn't a new transformation, it wasn't a new state, it was just an improved version of UI Sign, where Goku can now use his emotions. Remember, well, probably the biggest goal that Whis wanted Goku to, you know, improve upon and uh, obtain with his Ultra Instinct training was not only to learn how to use Ultra Instinct more in his other states and slowly get to the point where he would no longer need to transform to use Ultra Instinct, right? Goku getting to the point where he would always be in the Ultra Instinct state. But the other thing uh, was he wanted Goku to adapt and, you know, uh, develop his own fighting style with Ultra Instinct. For the most part, Goku had, you know, anytime Goku had used Ultra Instinct, he was fighting like an angel, right? Because that's what he, he was used, that's what he knew, right? He he was used to seeing Whis use Ultra Instinct, etc., etc. But... To make Ultra Instinct improve and to evolve and become a more well-rounded fighter and a more well-rounded UI user, Goku needed to develop his own uh, Ultra Instinct style that would cater more to his personality and, you know, his style. And that's the Ultra Instinct that we see Goku use against Gas. It's ultra, it's, that's why we call it true Ultra Instinct. Because it's true to Goku. It's true to him, right? It's not true to the angels. It's true and unique only to Goku. It's different from what we've seen in the past from Ultra Instinct, but it makes sense because it's Ultra Instinct adapted to Goku's fighting style, right? So we see Goku use emotions with uh, Ultra Instinct, which, like I said, we've never seen before, but it makes sense because it's unique and evolves to Goku's signature fighting style. So there's no difference here. No difference uh, whatsoever. The only difference... The only difference between UI sign uh, from what we've seen in the Tournament of Power and the Mora arc and the UI sign we see at the end of the Granola arc is Goku's now evolved UI sign to the point where he can use emotions. And, you know, which, you know, makes his mastery of Ultra Instinct all that more deeper, right? That's the only difference. And I've done a video on this before, but I wanted to talk about it a little bit more uh here um and i know tortaro uh, did a video uh in an interview with victory uchida talking about this a little bit but i don't remember making the video um on it and i i've talked about in the past where goku's gonna go with alternates right there's a couple different routes 
And I want to talk about that a little bit more, uh, you know, getting to the main point here. And I think the end game, most likely, the end game for Goku when it comes to his alternating journey, most likely, is him getting to a point where he no longer needs to transform. You know, to use Ultra Instinct. Like I've said in the past, that's more, you know, could be what N of Z Goku's going to represent, right? A guy who's always in the Ultra Instinct state, but in his base form. He no longer needs to necessarily transform to be in Ultra Instinct. He's just always in the state, like Whis, right? But I don't think we're getting to that point yet in the manga. You know, uh, I think the Goku is slowly going to get closer and closer to that as the manga continues going on. Um, I think what Goku's next evolution with UI could be before he eventually reaches the point where he no longer has to transform is um, something maybe like true master alternates in Goku, right? Goku's learned how to adapt uh, emotions into UI sign. Why can't he eventually get to the point where he uses emotions with the silver UI? Yes, I love, you know, silver hair UI and how badass it looks, how Goku doesn't have any emotions, right? He's always calm. He's always serious. He's, he's always badass. But maybe the next evolution is for, you know, Goku to truly make Ultra Instinct his own is to get emotions into the silver UI state, right? So maybe like a true master Ultra Instinct Goku. We've already got true Ultra Instinct or true UI sign or true UI omen. You know, I think it is on the table that we could get true mastered Ultra Instinct Goku. Or we get a version of Master Ultra Instinct Goku where uh, Goku still is calm and he's still, you know, his heart is tranquil, right? But he does use a little bit of emotions, like maybe, you know, not to the degree he does in UI Omen, but still, he his, he's still calm, his heart is calm and pure, but, and he's still using Ultra Instinct to its fullest extent, but, you know, uh, we see more emotions because if you look at UI, uh, or Master Ultra Instinct, especially in the manga, you know, the way Ultra Instinct is they did it in the Terminal Power in the anime is different than what they've done in the manga. They've done so much more with Ultra Instinct in the manga than they've done in the anime because, remember, the anime's been gone for like four or five years now, right? The manga hasn't stopped. Um, with the manga, uh, you know, uh, usually whenever you see Master Ultra Instinct Goku, he, he makes absolutely zero emotions. There's almost never any emotions on his face. You know, may every once in a while he may have a quick shock to his emotions, but never do you really see Goku emotional in the mass ultra instinct stake in 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 the manga. Maybe the next evolution, you know, is Goku still having that you know, that calm heart, right? And, you know, having things be tranquil for him, but he does have more of an emotional expression. Not to the degree he has it when he used true ultra instinct in UI Omen, but at least to the point where it's noticeable. Right, where people will be able to see a noticeable difference. Right, maybe that that could be where we're going. But you know, I just find it you know interesting how we we you know we finally get you know a really you know deep explanation here on true alternating now that where it should be pretty easy to understand. And if we're going based off this principle, right, Goku's next evolution with UI. Could be as simple as true Master Ultra Instinct Goku. That could be it, right? But I don't know. I don't write the story. I don't know what Tortoro and Toriyama's future plans for Ultra Instinct are. But I do think that is highly on the table. And that's something we should consider going into the future. As I do expect Goku's Ultra Instinct journey to continue, right? But I did think it would be, you know, an interesting topic because, uh, Really, this is probably, you know, outside of the announcement of the adaptation of the superhero movie in the manga. I did find that this was, you know, uh, pretty interesting. So, it is confirmed. True Ultra Instinct, or Ultra Instinct Sign, whatever you want to call it. True Ultra Instinct um, is UI Omen with emotions. It's not a new Ultra Instinct state. It's not a new form. It's nothing like that. It's, leg it's as simple as UI Omen with emotions, okay? Um... And we'll see. We'll see the you know uh, the impact it has on Goku Silver UI state uh, going to the future. Because remember, uh, Silver UI is still Goku's uh, 
uh, strongest form. But um, his heart has to be completely pure and tranquil uh, for it to be the most effective. And remember, when he faced Gas, uh, even though his heart appeared to be calm and tranquil, you know, his emotions were affecting him a little bit, which made Master UI unstable. Right, which is why Goku had to you, you know revert to true ultra instinct in his UI omen form. So we'll see what where this goes, especially once the manga comes back. You know, it might be a little bit till we see Goku's ultra instinct journey continue because they are going to be adapting. Uh, it appears the superhero movie in the manga, which I'm excited about. But of course, we're gonna uh, you know keep talking about it as the months go uh, by, and you know we'll just have to wait and see um, where it goes. But let me know what you guys think. You know, uh, let me. Well, what, where do you think Goku's ultra instinct journey is going to uh, go in the future? Um. Other than that, that's about all I've got for you guys uh, today. Let me know if you guys enjoyed the video. Please leave a like on the video. Uh, subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. Hit the bell next to my name, Fitzmong TV, so you guys are notified every time I post a new video. I will see you guys later. Follow me down on social media. The links are in the description down below. My Twitter is still there for now because... I don't know. These days, we it's like we never know how long Twitter's going to exist with, you know, the whole Elon Musk thing. But either way, my Twitter and my Instagram are down below if you guys want to give me a follow. Uh, thank you guys for everything. I will see you guys later. Stay safe and healthy, y'all. Peace.